Now let's talk a bit more about composition um, because as I already mentioned before uh, there are some concepts that if you if you follow them uh, there's a good chance your art and your artwork will be actually better and more pleasing to look at so yeah and as I mentioned before um, the way we started uh, this scene so we just blocked blocked out um, some basic shapes and then dove deeper and deeper to create more and more details is basically a good approach because there's a paper um, from a guy uh, named Neil Blevins and yeah this is the preview I will link in the in the description or uh, under the video and basically um, what he's writing about is the concept of some primary, secondary and tertiary shapes in the composition where you basically have uh, one main shape and then your eye can dive deeper into recognizing more details which are called secondary shapes and then there are tertiary shapes which are these uh, really small details and basically it's uh, perfectly represented here and that's what we basically does with this scene that if you look at something there's like a first read on some object where it's defined as some a large shape and primitive object then you go and create some details then you go create more and more and more and basically you end up with all these little 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 details that your eye can um, study when you look at the artwork and it really makes um, the image much better uh, to look at. So basically it comes down to defining the primary, secondary and tertiary shapes and there's a talk about distribution where if you do it like this it's not that interesting but see if you if you use some, some kind of uh, a little bit of a random scattering uh, it's much more pleasing to look at and there is a much more interest in that so um, yeah this is this is a little bit out of the scope of this but I really wanted to mention mention it and I wanted to give you a link so read this study this and um, there are a lot of articles from this guy that can be useful and are really general art stuff um, it, uh, it doesn't talk about any software at all so it's really useful to study things like this and to dive a little bit deeper into the composition so your art can improve over time and now back in blender um, you can see how we applied this rule where basically um, these big shapes are like a primary shape here and we achieved this by just blocking out the scene with the basic primitives and then we went deeper and like created uh, the roofs and the windows and the smaller details like pumps and the power source here, some pipes. And then we went even deeper and created like these uh, little details and the small stuff um, like the wireframes and the railings, the stairs, the windows here. And, and all, all these little things that add some visual interest to the scene. And right now, I think it's still a little bit empty. It doesn't look like that uh, right here in the workbench preview. But if you would look um, maybe here in the look dev mode, um, you can see there are some uh, large empty spaces, which can be good because um, again, it's not too good to like overload the scene with a lot of objects. Um, you need some resting areas for the eye. Um, so there actually is some contrast between the parts of the image where there is a visual interest and where there's not. But yeah, I think this one uh, still misses something. So let's add some objects, but um, we won't be doing any more modeling except uh, for the car and some some small details in the end 
So I want to make use of a library that I've prepared and the objects there are part of the asset pack that uh, was that is part of this course but I've separated them and got rid of the materials so we can do the shading ourselves after this so the file is located uh, under the video right here so you can uh, download it and place it uh, next to your uh, blend file and there are two ways how you can use external file like this and this is uh, useful to know if you want to use the asset pack that i've provided with the course properly and if you go to the file you can see there are two options there's a link and append and the main difference is that if you link from uh, some other blend file basically uh, it's a read-only embed so you you don't have the ability to modify it here and basically it's the object that's placed in the different blender file and you can just uh, place it in your scene and the append basically creates a duplicate where you can further modify that so yeah let's try that let's maybe press link and there is a file with assets right here and if you click that uh, it doesn't open right away but it offers you a folder structure of the blender file and you need to go to the object and then you can see a list of objects in this file and maybe we can import a vending machine okay so let's select the vending machine and import from library and if you go to the local view you can see it's placed at the point that it is placed in the original blend file so it won't be placed in the middle or on the cursor basically this just merges these two blend files together and if you would like to edit this there are no editing options you basically can do um, anything um, so let's delete this and exit the local view we can snap the cursor in the world origin and this is particularly useful when you have some uh, advanced production pipeline and maybe your colleague or friend is working on something different and you're working on some level design or landscape and there should be some building then it can be separated into a different blend file and your colleague can work on that uh, without the fear that you you will modify it or change it in your main layout scene so that can be very useful and now let's see what the append does so let's click file append maybe let's try a barrel append from library and right now you can see it's still placed uh, where it's placed originally in the blend file but if you edit this you have the full full editing options and basically this is just a copied object placed in your scene and if you modify this you won't affect uh, anything in the main blend file that it was imported from so um, this is uh, useful more for a library approach where as here I can provide a blend file for you with objects and you can use them in your scene modify them play with them and nothing changes in the original file um, yeah so as we imported the barrel here we can continue and place it somewhere in the scene uh, but the scale is a little bit wrong so we will need to adjust that so first of all we have snapping enabled so we can just move it somewhere here on the platform it will place it correctly and now just scale it down we can maybe look from the side to um, really get the perspective right and I think the barrel should be tall, something like this. And now if you rotate, um, we can actually uh, place it somewhere here. And let's duplicate this with Alt, so it's a link duplicate. And place it next to it. And maybe rotate on Z to create some variation. Okay, and now I really like the idea of having those barrels here maybe make them a little bit smaller yeah it was it was too much i think yeah if you look at the pumps i think it'll need to be something like this 
Okay, and now let's append another object. So file, append, and select tires. And scale them down and move them next to barrels like this. And you can see how, how easy this can be if you have a library of objects and you enable snapping, um, how easy it can be to actually fill the scene um, with objects. It doesn't have to be tedious at all. Okay, so there are some tires there just to create some visual interest uh, in this corner. And now let's continue and there are some more objects there and I want to place um, all of them here. So let's append another one and I want to place trash can. So let's place that and move it up here. Again, we'll need to scale this down and I'm doing this by the eye right now. So don't worry about that. Um, just maybe follow, uh, follow what I'm doing uh, in the terms of how tall the objects are actually. Yeah, and maybe move this uh, a little bit here to the corner. Yeah, and if you look from this side, where I want to place camera later and switch to the um, isometric, you can really find the angle that you like the most for the object. Maybe with these tires too. Actually, that was pretty good. And yeah, maybe make it a little bit smaller. Right now, I want to duplicate this trash can and move it under the stairs. So let's do that. Move it somewhere here. Um, maybe rotate this here a little bit. Create that variation. Okay. Don't forget to save your scene. And we'll continue by appending the vending machine here. So let's append and move it here in front of the building. Let's scale this down. And I really want to make this uh, size bright. So let's scale it maybe like, I don't know, maybe like this. So it's uh, not as tall as the window. And let's move it near the wall here. Okay, I really like that. And now I want to place a street light here. So let's place it. And you might think that it's a um, not very appropriate object here, but I really like the aesthetic of that. That um, on this kind of a cloud platform, uh, somebody would place like a traffic light. And it basically just shows the, the flying cars, whether the station is occupied from afar or whether they can um, fly in. So let's rotate this 90 degrees on the Z axis. I think the size is uh, good like that. Maybe we can do it a a little bit smaller, but I really like this. And one last thing to do, um, again, is to place another object, append and select the street pole, add it here and I want to place it right here. And again, you might think, what does a wooden street pole doing on a levitating cloud station, but but that's the part of this um, diesel punk aesthetics where you can just take all things and bash them together and mix them with the modern technology. Okay, so let's look from the side and rotate this on the Z axis 90 degrees and make it tall, something like this. And again, I'm doing this by the eye so yeah, your side view should look maybe something like this in terms of the composition and some leading guides. Okay, so um, this is our scene. 
and basically it's almost ready there's just one other thing we need to add and that's some uh, cables here and there um, but I want to do it after the car is modeled because there will be some cables on the car as well so let's postpone that and let's move on to the car modeling <laughs> 